You're most welcome to this newscast. A beautiful Sunday, and of course, we've been having the showers of blessing. Thank you so much for choosing the National Broadcaster. It is the 27th day of November 2022, and uh, this is our weekly news roundup. You can expect activities, a top stories, and highlights of the entire week. My name is Sandra Kehund, and I'm proud to be here and serve you. And of course, uh, starting off with activities that did transpire during the week. Uh, President Yori Kaguta Museveni uh, this weekend uh, returned uh, from the Socialist uh, Republic of Vietnam where he spent uh, three days at uh, the invitation of his counterpart, President uh, Gwen Shan. Uh, the president uh, was received at Entebbe International Airport by the Vice President, uh, Major Jessica Alupo. Uh, the Minister for Presidency, Mili Babirie Babalanda, Head of the Public Service and the Secretary to Cabinet, uh, Lucy Nachobe Mbonye. The Commissioner General of Prisons, uh, Dr. Johnson Nabia Shaija, uh, the Joint Chief of Staff, Uganda Police uh, Major uh, General Abel Kandiho, and the uh, Commander Air Force Lieutenant General Charles Okindi. While in Vietnam, uh, General Museveni held bilateral talks with the host uh, president at the Presidential Palace, uh, witnessed the signing of agreements and a different memorandum of understandings uh, between the two governments. The President also addressed the Vietnam Uganda Business uh, Summit and Trade Exhibition at the Vietnam National Convention Center Hanoi on the theme Unlocking Investment Opportunities. In other activities, the government has embarked on improving the quality of learning and teaching of science through innovations and good practices in primary schools. Uh, this follows uh, the launch of the dis disbursement of 340 science kits to establish the mobile mini laboratories in primary schools across the country. Early this year, government, through the Minister of Education and Sports, launched the distribution of 340 science kits to establish mobile mini laboratories in primary schools across the country. This mini lab is simple to handle and stocked with apparatus, equipment that makes the primary level not only practical but interesting to learners. The move was aimed at creating a firm foundation of science teaching in primary schools by changing the approach of science appreciation. If you are teaching the young one about the heart or the eye and you bring a model and you say the eye looks like this, not just drawing a diagram, that sticks better in his head than teaching him or her in what? In the theories. The initiative would enable learners to have a smooth transition of science from primary to secondary level by getting rid of challenges to new science subjects. I mean, if you have many now appreciating sciences and mathematics at P7 and they are able to pass it, then you will not have challenges at second, even at A level, even in the universities. It is against this background that in Tungamo, Iganga, Soroti, and Gulu districts received 20 science kits each. So we received the, the kits and we gave them out to the schools during the Teachers' Day celebrations. The entire district were very appreciative uh, for uh, the Ministry of Education and Sports, more especially to our mama. Uh, Janet Museveni, uh, the Minister of Education and Sports, for the initiatives. According to the teachers, the kids have eased the teaching of science in primary schools more than ever before. Before the kids, it would become sometimes very difficult for you to explain. For example, if there, there is an eye, you know it becomes very ambiguous. You are telling the child the eye and you can't show the whole of it when you just draw the diagram or draw on the chart it looks like it, it does not come out well so this skeleton has made my work very easy now and the children are enjoying the lesson because they are able to see the real 
and the, they are touching it, they, they are naming it as they see the bones. It is evident that these initiatives have enabled learners to acquire the necessary knowledge and skills relevant to personal and national development. It is now easier for us to just see and we shall draw it. It doesn't even make the teachers to draw it on the blackboard. Before this thing came, we could just see only the front parts, but now I can hold it, I turn it around, I see the behind parts, the in front parts, I see it very, very, very well. With the help of science kids, a number of schools are hoping to excel in science. What was there in the science kit, I even saw some of the questions in the past paper that I saw after the exam has come out. So I am very hopeful we are going to score. However, there is a need for more science kits, claiming that one kit per school is like a single drop in an ocean. We really want more of the kits. Actually, we would thank you so much if more of the kits were brought today, not even, not even tomorrow. We thank you so much. The kids are really enjoying. When you have kids with practical, it is what they want. Even when you are talking, you are still introducing, you are actually wasting their time. You see this large class, and everybody has a right and has interest to at least touch these and interact with the skeleton. So it takes long for everybody to participate in a touching this thing and learning and naming parts practically. I wish there were more of this in every other group. The work would be done once and for all. There is also a demand for kids in the schools and districts that missed in the first phase. The pressure we have been getting from these other schools that never got, it is immense. Remember, even government primary schools, being 242. So when you take away the 20 that you received, then 222. They remain at the large. According to government, the distribution of kits will be rolled out to the rest of schools in phased manner. The government plans to procure the main laboratory equipment in phased manner, depending on the available resources, starting with districts uh, which uh, have very poor results than others. The other Good to know you're still watching uh, this particular newscast. Uh, now, before we get to other activities of the week, I'm having uh, Grace Kemigisha on standby. And, of course, the team on ground in Busika has been led uh, by Onyango right there on ground. And they're yet to give us an update. And as far as uh, the annual um, the Forces Motocross Championship is all about, and uh, they're in uh, Busika. Uh, well, Grace uh, Kemigisha, over to you. She's a sports uh, reporter. She's yet to uh, give us that particular update. Over to you, Agress. Okay. Uh, Sandra, we are here at the Busika Race Track where the second annual Armed Forces Appreciation Ever Championship is happening in 2022 after being halted by COVID, in, uh, the last one having happened in 2019. This year's, uh, this year's championship has been mad with and we have not gotten a turn up as we had expected expected thousands of people to come and uh, cheer on the racers. However, a hundred, hundreds of people have braved the rain to come and support the different racers. This championship is mainly, is mainly intended to help, to, to appreciate the, the men and women in uniform. And we, we are going to talk briefly to one of the organizers, Mr. Nuwajira Michael, aka Kabuta Toyota, to tell us more about this challenge. So uh, as you can see, I am in the VIP lounge where the armed forces are lounging right now as we wait for the flag off of the racers. The flag of the, of the racers had not started because of the rain, but also we were waiting for the guest of honor who we hear will be landing at this Musika restaurant at any time now. I will speak to 
back to Mr. Kulaije, who will tell us more about the race and, the, and what this means to, to the armed forces. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Grace. This yeah. is UBC. Yeah. You're live on UBC. Yeah. About this particular motocross race, what does it mean to the armed forces? And why do you think it's important to have it at such a time as this? No, for us, everything is important as long as it brings us closer to the one inch. Motocross, first of all, sports is a uniting element of force. Now, when it comes to this one, where we are both involved as the armed forces as well as the one inch, it, cre it uh, strengthens the bond between the people of Uganda and, in particular, the riders and the EPDF. Okay. So uh, how many how many UPDF riders do you think will be taking on the track in this particular particular race? I, I, I do not have the exact figures, but I know we have riders in there. We have also riders from the civilians and the international riders from other countries. So uh, from an armed forces uh, point of view, do you think, as you've said, this brings you closer to the Nawa Wanainchi? What are some of the things you, you would want the Wanainchi to know about the armed forces? One, that the armed forces are their own. We come from them, we belong to them. Number two, that we also enjoy sporting activities like they do. Number three, that when we see such sporting activities, it is testimony that the country is secure and people are free to enjoy as they are enjoying now. And that's why you can see all categories of people here, young, old, all alike. Number four, when we participate in the people of Uganda, it simply reminds us that we are in this uniform for you. This uniform is not an end, but a means to an end of securing you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. So we shall, we shall now talk to the organizers. The chief guest has just arrived, so as you can see, the cameraman can, uh, can uh, give you those, uh, those pictures coming in. The guest of honor has just arrived, and uh, shortly we shall be flagging off the first uh, group of racers. This race is going to have uh, racers from uh, junior, junior competitors, senior competitors, MX1, MX2, MX1, 122. So we shall talk to the minister who has just arrived as a guest of honor for this particular event. Mr. Toyota, your live on UBC would want to just have a comment. So, Sandra, for now we shall all we had for you we shall get back to you later Thank you so much, Grace Akemigisha, our sports reporter, for that particular update. Well, the team is on ground as they were coming to us live from Busike. And, uh, of course, they've been led by Onyango. Uh, great work. And uh, for more updates uh, later on in the day in our timely news hours, so all you have to do is keep watching UBC. Now, in more of our top stories that did transpire during the week, uh, uh, we happen to see Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, UBC, uh, in a partnership with Islamic Development a Bank on Improving the Broadcasting Infrastructure and the Country. The managing director, UBC Winston Agaba, disclosed that the partnership aims at getting a loan from the Islamic Development Bank to expand the free-to-air infrastructure uh, to cover the entire country. Well, he revealed the move as the officials from the Islamic Development Bank paid a courtesy call to the National Broadcaster Manage Management uh, to brief them on various uh, projects uh, they are undertaking in Uganda. Let's have the details. A team from Islamic Development Bank has paid a cutter's call to Uganda Broadcasting Corporation Management to brief them on various projects they are undertaking in the country. The team that was led by the Director of Marketing and Communications, Dr. Ahmed, was accompanied by the Regional Hub Manager, Umar Idrisu, that outlined various projects that they have been funding in Uganda, ranging from road infrastructure, education and health. We are not here um, to, uh, it has nothing to do with religion. Is there the mode of financing is Islam, is, you know, is Sharia compatible. And the principle of 
the Sharia finance is that you know financing has to be fair, it has to be equitable, it has to be just. You know, that is these are some of the principles. So it has nothing to do with religion. It's just the mode of you know, and if you look at all the Abrahamic fake Christian Judaism, they all condemn interest. Interest is not allowed. You see the case when Jesus went into the temple and he chased away the money changers and he turned around the tables. See, that is this is the essence that we are trying to, you know, from the Abraham faith we try to promote ethical, you know, sort of, you know, financing. That is where the Islamic, you know, comes in. But our mandate is pure, you know, development. The Islamic Development Bank started in 1975 to respond to the challenges of the developing countries. And the regional hub manager says the IDB is committed to supporting government of Uganda as it has been doing in the last 40 years. Set up the regional hub here in Kampala. A lot of countries were vying for it. But uh, after discussion, deliberation, we were only 11 hubs and we have 57 member countries. But you see, the bank management in their wisdom decided that it will be, be, it will be in Uganda. And the Uganda hub will cover Uganda, Mozambique, Djibouti, Comoros, and Somalia. So this is a good place for Uganda. And since our arrival here, um, the government and people of Uganda have been very, very supportive. The UBC management welcomed the partnership and says that they will secure an interest-free loan from IDB to expand the free-to-air infrastructure project across the country and improve content. You found us in discussions of how to get support to make sure that we live to the mandate. Our mandate is so big, we are 100% government, just like the MD mentioned the area before. But for us to be in position to actually achieve our mandate, we really need to these partnerships. So we are happy if uh, Islamic Development Bank can position us as your lead media agents, that we can also publicize and vi visualize all what you do in Uganda. And uh, we are looking at synergies where this development funding that goes through government should be able we should be able to tap into some of the areas we've agreed areas of infrastructure areas of uh, renewable energy and areas of content content development so we are we are looking at that partnership and uh, it should uh, pay dividends not only to better content development uh, content but also informing the Ugandan population as to what the Islamic development, uh, the Islamic development funding and banking is uh, bringing onto the Ugandan market. Philip Aguta, UBC News in Kampala. The International Criminal Court, a chief prosecutor this week, has sought to revive the case against a fugitive rebel commander who, since an arrest warrant, was issued in 2005 on allegations of war crimes. Prosecutor Karim Khan said he had asked judges for authorization to hold a hearing to confirm the charges against Kony. The head of the notorious Lord's Resistance Army in his absence. Kony launched a rebellion more than three decades ago in northern Uganda. The head best ICC issued an arrest warrant for Kony in 2005 on allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity. However, this arrest warrant remains unexecuted to this day. Kony has sought to event judicial proceedings at this court for more than 17 years. Despite continuing efforts, Ken said in a statement. The allegations against Connie and the arrest warrant include murder, cruel treatment, enslavement, rape and attacks against the civilian population, the ICC said. In other updates of the week, the Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, is holding a Randiz National who attacked a UPDF officer with a machete and a runaway with an AK-47 in Kaboya sub-county, Chikuwe district. Teojin Hafasha, who allegedly entered Uganda illegally from Rwanda, attacked Private Awikliff uh, Mosebira of the 13th Battalion, who was guarding a Bugoma Central Forest Reserve section that was leased to Hoima Sugar Limited by Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom for sugarcane growing. 
A random man who grabbed a gun from a UPDF officer has been arrested after a two search by security personnel from the first division. The suspect was nabbed while trying to flee the country after grabbing and hiding the gun in Bogoma Forest. After arresting him, he guided us up to where he had <laughs> Private Musibida is also detained over self deployment. Self deployment is not allowed in UPDF. So, since he was assisting the, the people who are vandalizing the forest, in a manner which led to the, to, to loss of this guy. The resident district commissioner Kikube Amlan Tumusime says that the suspect will answer charges of grabbing a gun from a UPDF officer. Fortunately, it's not even a Uganda. So he, so he will tell us what was his motive of grabbing a gun from an, uh, from a, an armed, well-dressed armed officer in uniform and on duty. What? Amlan says they are even investigating a certain church in Kikube that has been soliciting money to enable the suspect flee the country. There is a church here which we are also investigating, which I will not give you the details, but members of this church, we are collecting money from him, for him, and he wanted to escape to Chigali. Uh, that's a fact. He wanted to escape to Chigali, but we shall get more details. Four members of Hafasha's family have also been arrested and are currently being held at Chikube Central Police Station. This has come after other several attacks on security personnel in the central part of the country where asylums target guns. A research survey conducted by the Uganda Media Women Association in partnership with the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives has recommended that media training institutions in the country should consider incorporating gender-responsive reporting course units in their programs so as to nurture a culture of gender-responsive media reporting in the future. The survey team, led by the WUMA Executive Director, uh, Margaret Center Masagazi, presented the findings to journalists at Akisase WUMA offices. Findings by the Uganda Media Women Association in partnership with the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives have revealed that gender gaps still persist as regards the portrayal of women both as news sources and news subjects. The study is part of the seven-month Gender Responsive NEFS project which intends to enhance women's visibility and portrayal in the media content and programming in Uganda. The study team, led by the WOMO Executive Director, Margaret Center Masagazi, found out that 28% of women were reportedly news sources and subjects in the year 2022, as opposed to 72% of their male counterparts during the same period. Regarding talk shows, only 30% women were portrayed as opposed to their male counterparts at 70%. And we are also calling upon or trying to work with the Ministry of Information to participate in the reform of the media laws so that they can become gender responsive. Also in the international frameworks that we have and very particular on the international conventions we have the Beijing platform of 1995 that calls upon the media to have equal and enhance or be an enabler through the platforms that we serve on for next the survey also revealed that only Makere University and Uganda Christian University had incorporated running gender media responsive course units in their training, despite the fact that there are over 50 media training institutions in the country. We can become gender responsive because if the policies and programs and also the curriculum become responsive to the needs of everybody, not be here. The Uganda Media Women Association Woman was established way back in 1983 to advocate for increased women voices in the media as a way of pursuing for their rights. Edward Kanjuko Chisasi, Kawempe Division for UBC News. 
Moving on, the Chancellor, African Rural University, Justice Ezekiel Mohanguzi, this week advised graduates to uphold integrity, discipline, and creativity in the world of competitive job market. Justice Mohanguzi was officiating the eighth graduation ceremony of rural development at African Rural Female University main campus in Kagadi district. The Chancellor of African Rural University Justice Ezekiel Mohanguzi has challenged graduates to cherish discipline, integrity and creativity by applying academic work in the field in order to transform their rural communities. He was speaking as a chief guest at the 8th graduation ceremony of African Rural University. Friends, let me tell you, there is no more scarce commodity in Uganda than the commodity called Integrity. The senior presidential advisor on oil, gas and minerals, Dr. Ingnia Fred Kabagambe Kalisa, thanked Dr. Mwalim Mosheshe for establishing the only unique female university in Uganda for rural transformation and asked graduates to denounce corruption, extortion, indiscipline and immorality while at work. By the way, uh, knowledge and hard work can be got over time training as it were but once you are thief you are thief that's, that's the bottom line that's the vice chancellor african rural university and founder of uganda rural development and training program dr mwali mosheshe thanked funders of the university and urged graduates for developing self-discovery initiatives and eradicating poverty at household level they are not funding aru directly but they are paying the salaries of our graduates in the 20 districts. We want to thank them for that. Because they have seen value in what we are offering. The best graduates in rural development thanked the founder and their parents, saying their success was out of discipline and research. Third first class with a CGPA of 4.4, and it has been determination and creating my strategies to work hard, especially my mentors have been have done a lot, and also attending lectures, not missing, because when you miss next time when you come in class, you will not be together with the ones who are there, so I had to be attending every day. African Rural University is the only female university in Bonyoro, which started in 2006 and has graduated over 500 since its inception. The Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Monica Masanza Musenero, this week challenged graduates to prioritize serving their communities irrespective of the qualifications they hold. Musenero was speaking to graduates of the Christian Child Care Program Vocational Training Institute that is in Mbale. Program Mbali has graduated over 700 students in vocational skills. For the year 2018-2019. The Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Monica Musanza Musenero, challenged graduates to prioritize service delivery to their communities. Musenero was speaking to graduates at 24th graduation ceremony of Christian Child Care Program Vocation Training Institute, Mbali. Work hard. Don't sympathize with yourself. Don't just talk. Don't just be criticizing. Young people get off social media and get to work. It is hard work. Whatever they give you to do, do it. Always be creative. Don't sit there thinking, oh, now I finished school, now I don't know what to do. Be creative. If you haven't found money yet to start your tailoring business, find maize and roast. You are going to determine the future of your families. The executive director, Nathan Waliawala, cited the wage bill as the key challenge that the institution is grappling with calling for government support. There are limited teachers in the vocational training. We have very few of them. The most of the people who are giving us a service in that area are the people who are supposed to be working elsewhere, who are technical, but they are not teachers. So to get these people and retain them, you need, to, uh, uh, you need a facilitation. The challenge is actually the paying of those teachers. I'm happy about it though. I've still been skilled, so 
when I get enough funds, I'll do business. After this, I'm looking forward to going for my bachelor's. Uganda Technical College, Eligon, also graduated over 1,000 during its ninth validation ceremony officiated by the Assistant Commissioner, Business and Social Development Education, Elizabeth Katema. We call upon our employers to take on the technicians because for them they have the hands-on training compared to the ones that are managers that are trained at mm -hmm. universities. The principal, Uganda Technical College, Eligon, Paul Mulima, as the graduates to desist from running to the Arab world for employment, saying reliable information indicates that a number of youth have been mistreated or lost their lives. Desist from going to Middle East for all the jobs. You are a class apart and you do so only for specialized skills, please. Mbarara city leadership this week confirmed that it's already in agreement with security agencies to relocate all street children from the city. This has been revealed by the deputy town clerk and Mbarara city, Mojisha Richard, while officiating a Christmas party for street kids in Mbarara organized by Redeemed of the Lord a Development Agency. Mbarara Street children have an early Christmas party courtesy of Redeemed of the Law Development Agency, an NGO rescuing street kids from the streets. The executive director, Elizabeth Kasaja, says they have celebrated with the kids to convince them to go back home because they still have a future if they are minded about. I believe that these children are traumatized and by trauma we mean they've lost dignity as children. A normal child doesn't stay on the street. So we try to restore that. And then the P, we become the parents of these children for the time they are with us. Elizabeth says they have managed to rescue 180 street kids and some of them are now important people in the country. One of them is a banker, another one is, is a manager in a microfinance. We have teachers, we have um, designers. Mbarara City has almost 300 street kids, of which some are now turned into street men and women. The deputy RCC Mbarara City North, Robert Kanusu, challenged probation officers and other organizations to cluster these kids and go for skills because government has such programs. You know very well that the government of NERM has a program of vocational schools in every sub-county, in every division, in every city. So we can have these children integrated into these schools so that they can be skilled to become mechanics, to become carpenters, to become beauticians, to do all the kind of work of their interests. The deputy town clerk, Mbarara City, Mugisha Richard says, street kids have become criminals and they are going to sweep all of them out of this city. We are already in agreement, the plan is already hatched with security agencies that we comb all these streets. Because these people who are looked at as street kids, they have caused a lot of mayhem. They have caused havoc. They turn themselves into scrap dealers. They take people's padlocks. They take people's uh, properties. Some of these street kids say they leave their homes due to mistreatment by their guardians and parents. Brian Tuminebiaruhanga and Nelson, UBC News. <laughs> In other activities of the week, a Uganda Water and Sanitation Network this week launched a 14 stands, a toilet, a facility at Vora Customs border in Arua district to curb communicable diseases at the border point. A Vura Customs is an entry to Democratic Republic of Congo that has an average of 200 trailers passing every day and several other private travelers. And water sanitation network, Yunia Musazi has said communicable diseases like cholera, diarrhea, and COVID 19, among others, are preventable through access to clean water. She was officiating a water and sanitation network co founded 14 stands toilet.
facility at the Vora Customs border in Arua district. In the year 2000, as we all know, we got the challenge of uh, COVID-19, a pandemic that took many lives. But one of the remedies of addressing it was ensuring that everyone had access to clean water to wash their hands. So one of our donors, development partners, Water Aid, came on board to support us in that. As we all know, COVID-19 was transmitted mainly through uh, around the borders. So we have truck drivers who cross an estimate of around 200 a day. But the community told us that you cannot curb the spread of communicable rash-related diseases if you only address hand washing. Because the same transient population, the truck drivers, they don't only want to wash their hands, they want to bathe, they want to use the, the, you know, the toilets. So we went back to our donor who had, so we do some quarter aid, who are working with us to supplement on government uh, programs. Uh, we've now come back to launch um, a 14 stance uh, toilet and bathroom for both women, men and the disabled. Manase Anjiku, the Arua District Health Inspector, noted that the facility will eliminate open defecation at the border point. Of course, clearance takes time. So this, in, when this was lacking, they would go behind in the kind of cover of darkness or in their cabin and uh, 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 empty their bags. That's defecating in bags, paper bags, even uh, uh, empty bot water bottles as it was meant so they end up what? Littering it around. And this was a, 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 an opportunity for infection to spread. So this facility certainly has, has been put there to address what? This problem. The same project has been implemented in nine other border points of six East African states of Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC and Tanzania where the same sanitation facilities have been established. This border border is also, when we compare it to other border points in Uganda, we felt it's really a strategic location because of the volume of people that utilize it. Joseph Olama, UBC News, in Arua District. Now, the Secretary General Uganda Hotels Union is petitioning government uh, to enforce international labor standards uh, on occupational safety and health. That and more other updates come in your way shortly after these messages when I return. MTN presents Tugende Mochika Day at Kampala Serena Hotel on Saturday, 3rd December 2022. Standard tickets go for 100k, gold, 300k, and 3 million for platinum. Or pay 90,000 shillings if you pay using MTN mobile money. Remember, this is only applicable to ordinary tickets. Featuring Eddie Away, Chasen Alubega, Sweet Kid, Kawiye Semboga, Akiki Romeo, Betty Pologuma, Ziggy D, Lady Mariam, Tina Tine, Abdul Mulasi, and featuring Ab Makeup band. All this at Kampala Serena Hotel. For reservations, call 0785-961-910. Dress code, retro style. Sponsored by Elderly Network Foundation, Coca-Cola, Al Braris Limited, Kadanke, and MTN. Welcome to the Living Room Stadium. It's the FIFA World Cup. The match is about to start. Food and drink ready. There's no space left for anyone. Come on, get your lucky chair. Take your usual spot. Even the puppy has one. It's preparation time. You can feel the tension in the air. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? Yeah. <laughs> Sending money the old way. <sighs> Yeah, wrong number. <laughs> Sending money with the My Airtel app. Uh -huh. You have the power in your pocket. The power to access and confirm contact details in real time before you send money. Unlock that power with the My Airtel app. Visit the App Store or Google Play now. 
the Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We, however, urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes, and mouth. Please inform the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms. To prevent Ebola from spreading further, please take the following preventive measures. Regular washing of hands with water and soap, avoid handshaking and hugging, avoiding any contact with any suspected Ebola patients. Any person who dies suddenly should not be buried but reported to the nearest health worker or LC1 immediately. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800-100-066 or send a free SMS to your report on 8500. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and World Health health organization get value for your money by choosing the right paint with global paints you don't just paint but paint for generations to come make global paints a paint of choice and make your building a paradise we have weather coat emulsion, undercoat emulsion, silk vinyl emulsion, flat emulsion, super gloss, and high gloss. Global Paint, a reliable product. Welcome to Friend Stadium. Everybody's ready. Wait a second, not everybody. Come on, dude. It's the FIFA World Cup. You're going to lose your seat, the ritual seat, the lucky one. Losing more than a seat, your team is going to lose. Where are you, dude? The match is about to start. Your friends won't hold out much longer. Excuse me, excuse me. Finally, everything is in the right place. Hey, other hand. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? Thank you so much for watching and staying. It is a weekly roundup coming your way. It comes your way every Sunday afternoon. Now, in other activities, I was saying the Secretary General of Uganda Hotels a Union, uh, Mawuku Richard Moses, are saying that uh, despite being signatories to a number of ELO conventions, uh, many workers in Uganda, especially in the fast foods, continue to risk their lives while executing their duties with company owners and demand uh, to streamline safety and health in these places. Uh, this was contained in a petition to government to enforce international labor standards on occupational safety and health. <laughs> Unionists under the Hotels, Food, Tourism, Supermarkets and Allied Workers Union are dismayed over increasing risks to health caused by workers dealing in fast foods. Fast food workers in Uganda call for the following rights. Freedom to join the union, collective bargaining, negotiated salaries, stock wages. Government to fast track the process to ratify ILO Convention 190 and Recommendation 206. Educate the masses on the causes of, the, of violence and harassment. According to the Secretary General HTS Union, Mauku Richard Moses, something has to be done to reduce the risks at the fast food restaurants and hotels. The plight of the workers in the fast food sector, that is the workers under the restaurants. Under the circumstances, the problem is that they have gone ahead to manipulate workers not only through poor pay, but other conditions including sexual harassment to these young workers. And those are the vices that we want to uh, fight and we, in the same vein, want to call upon government to fast track the issue of uh, ratifying Convention 190. The union is also taking up some companies who have failed to observe collective bargaining agreements for workers' rights of association. Hiccups that we have met in the exigence of our services as unions, uh, that people who think are known or they know some members of the first family are using it wrongfully to uh, 
abrogate constitutional and all legal provisions. But we can only promise one thing, that we can only continue to pursue them. The deputy director in charge of gender, domestic and migrant workers at the hotels union, Asumpta Namaganda, says there is continued harassment of domestic workers. Therefore, we are calling, uh, are calling upon the government of Uganda to ratify Convention 189, which is decent work for domestic workers. Domestic workers are workers as other workers in Uganda. Domestic workers deserve to have an employment contract. They deserve to serve with, uh, to serve with NSSF. Solidarity forever for the union makes us strong. Recent global statistics indicate that 2.78 million workers succumb to occupation deaths annually. 2.4 million. More business talk coming away. Uh, the Minister of Tourism is set to establish a multi-billion handcraft center in Masindi aimed at enhancing art and craft products in the country. Uh, this was revealed by the ED Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Center. Uh, James Masinguzi, who represented the State Minister for Tourism, Martin Mugara Bahinduka, uh, during the three-day handcraft exhibition. Uganda attracts at least 1.5 million tourists annually, which contributes to 7.7% of the domestic gross product, apart from the attractive nature. Art is one of the sectors which attracts tourists in Uganda. It's from this background that the Ministry of Tourism is set to construct a multi-billion handcraft center in Masindi to ease trade of handcraft materials. I am proud to report that through this project we are constructing a state-of-the-art art handcraft production center in Masindi which will be a collection point for all craft producers in the region to produce, showcase and sell their products to tourists. In 2019, government through the Ministry of Tourism initiated the Handcraft and Sovereign Project aimed at boosting incomes of youths and women. This project will also contribute to Uganda's export trade through increasing non-taxable income. This project has contributed to the Uganda government's efforts to diversify and increase non-traditional exports while supporting job creation as provided before in the Uganda Vision 2040. Olid Sheriff, Algeria's ambassador to Uganda, stressed the need to exercise inter trade relations between Uganda and Algeria. Uganda will see what Algeria is producing and the other way around, the other way around Ugandans will go to Algeria and to showcase what they are doing as artifacts and handicrafts here. And, uh, and also in the tourism uh, industry. The purpose of this expo is to connect these traders, producers, and uh, different uh, producer groups together to create that linkage. Since Some of the exhibitors applauded government for the political conducive environment which attracts women in business. So we are using the resources within our means to earn an income. So really the women are benefiting and we appreciate the government so much for giving us such an opportunity. It has been so enriching to help us move from one stage to another, but also to help us think bigger and grow bigger. Irene Faith Nantongo, Mary Namokose. Now, summing up business for you, the Minister for Tourism and Wildlife and Antiquities, Colonel Tombo Timmer, says the government has created institutions to equip Ugandans with skills through vocational institutes, thus reducing on unemployment. He disclosed this a while at the 13th graduation ceremony of Uganda Hotel and Tourism Institute in Jinja. Uganda Hotel and Tourism Institute Jinja has held its 13th graduation ceremony at Institute with at least 216 students being awarded diplomas and certificates in tourism, pastry, baking and hotel management among others. <laughs> Yeah. 
The Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, Colonel Tom, applauded Ministry of Education and Sports for supporting the vocational institutes. I'd like to thank the Ministry of Education and Sports, National Council of Higher Education, Skills Council and National Development Curriculum Center for the tremendous work they have done in supporting this institute. Butimi says government is investing in promoting the institute through restructuring the Crested Crane Hotel and other institute infrastructures that is to commence early next year for a competitive tourism industry. The government is investing in upgrading the institute by constructing a three-star training hotel which is near completion and construction of classrooms, training laboratories, and offices is expected to commence next year. Expo Uganda Hotel and Tourism Institute Ginger Namtosi Mariam briefed the minister about the challenges that limited the institute from graduating a large number of students and called on the government to work on restructuring the institute for better service delivery. We have inadequate lecture rooms and training laboratories, inadequate office space and equipment including computers and furniture and also face high training costs in terms of utilities, <coughs> practical materials, equipment and tools, and high maintenance costs. Parents Naduk, chairperson, board of the Uganda Hotel and Tourism Institute, explained the role of the board of directors at the institute. But is currently embarking and benchmarking international practices and policies to manage an internationally reputable tourism school. Justin Nakami, UBC. Thank you for watching the weekly news roundup that comes your way every Sunday lunchtime. Well, keep watching UBC. Better programming is coming your way uh, to make you enjoy uh, your Sunday and, of course, enjoy your weekend. More news will be coming your way later on in the day. Keep watching UBC. My name is Sandra Kahuna. Of course, from the entire team, working tirelessly and passionately uh, to inspire you. Wish you a beautiful afternoon and, of course, a fruitful week ahead. God bless you. MTN presents Tugende Mochika Day at Kampala Serena Hotel on Saturday, 3rd December 2022. Standard tickets go for 100k, gold, 300k, and 3 million for platinum. Or pay 90,000 shillings if you pay using MTN mobile money. Remember, this is only applicable to ordinary tickets. Featuring Eddie Away, Chas Nalubega, Sweet Kid, Kabiye Semboga, Akiki Romeo, Betty Pologuma, Ziggy D, Lady Mariam, Tina Tine, Abdumulasi, and featuring Abdul Makeup band. All this at Kampala Serena Hotel. For reservations, call 0785 961 910. Dress code Retro Style. Sponsored by Elderly Network Foundation, Coca Cola, Al Braris Limited, Kadanke, and MTN. UBC, inspiring Uganda. Tukuvunga zee 